Advent means to me happiness all the time. I think Advent means time to prepare for Christmas. <laughs> I think Advent means when um, Jesus was born. Welcome to a special mini meditation in Advent service. We welcome Karen, Chris, Charlotte, Grace, and Julia Hill to light the love candle. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people loved darkness instead of light, because their deeds were evil. We light this fourth candle of Advent in the spirit of love. Charlie Brown Christmas by Charles M. Schultz. Christmas time was here. Soft snowflakes floated down from the sky, and sweet sound of carols filled the air. Everyone felt happy. Well, almost everyone. I think there must be something wrong with me, Linus, Charlie Brown told his friend. Christmas is coming, but I'm not happy. I just don't understand Christmas, I guess. I always end up feeling depressed. You're the only person I know who can take a wonderful season like Christmas and turn it into a problem, Linus replied. Maybe Lucy's right. Of all the Charlie Browns in the world, you're the Charlie Browniest. Charlie Brown thought Linus might be onto something. He decided to go to Lucy's booth for some advice. Five cents, please, Lucy greeted him. Charlie Brown dropped a nickel into Lucy's can. Lucy shook the can. I love hearing the beautiful sound of cold hard cash. Now, what seemed to be the trouble? I feel depressed. Charlie Brown told her. I think we'd better pinpoint your fear, said Lucy. If we can find out what you're afraid of, we can label it. Are you afraid of staircases? If you are, then you have climacophobia. Or maybe you have pantophobia. What's pantophobia? asked Charlie Brown. The fear of everything, Lucy replied. That's it, Charlie Brown cried out. He showed so loudly that Lucy flew off her chair. Actually, Lucy, my trouble is Christmas, Charlie Brown admitted. I just don't understand it. Instead of feeling happy, I feel sort of let down. Lucy knew what would help. You need to get involved. How would you like to be the director of our Christmas play? Charlie Brown smiled. He and Lucy made plans to meet at the auditorium. As, Lu as Lucy went off, Snoopy walked by, holding a box of lights and decorations. Charlie Brown followed him to his doghouse. What's going on? Charlie Brown asked his dog. Snoopy handed him a piece of paper. Charlie Brown began to read aloud. Find the true meaning of Christmas. When money, money, money. Spectacular, super colossal neighborhood Christmas lights and display contest. Charlie Brown looked up from the paper and groaned. My own dog gone commercial, I can't stand it. Next, Charlie Brown ran into his sister. Sally, I've been looking for you, big brother. Will you please write a letter to Santa Claus for me? Sally asked. Sally began telling Charlie Brown what she wanted him to write. Dear Santa Claus, how have you been? Did you have a nice summer? How's your wife? I've been extra good this year, so I have a long list of presents that I want. Please note the size and color of each item and send as many as possible. If it seems too complicated, make it easy on yourself. Just send money. How about tens and twenties? Tens and twenties, Charlie Brown cried. That didn't seem like the true Christmas spirit. 
At the auditorium, Lucy had an announcement. Quiet, everybody. Our director will be here any minute and we'll start rehearsal. Director? What director? asked Patty. Charlie Brown, Lucy replied. Oh, no, we're doomed, said Violet. Here he comes, Lucy, said Lucy. Attention, everyone. Charlie Brown addressed the cast, but no one listened, listened to him. They were all dancing as Schroeder played his piano. Stop the music, Charlie Brown shouted into his megaphone. We're going to do this play, and we're going to do it right. Lucy, get those costumes and scripts and pass them out. Lucy walked up to Frida and gave her a script and a costume. You're the innkeeper's what wife. Did innkeeper's wives have natural curly hair, Frida asked. Lucy walked over to Pigpen. You're the innkeeper. Pigpen looked proud. In spite of my outward appearance, I shall try to run a knee in. Lucy went over to Snoopy. We'll have to be all, all the animals in our play, Lucy told him. Can you be a sheep? Bah, needed Snoopy. How about a cow? asked Lucy. Moo, moo, Snoopy. How about a penguin? asked Lucy. Clock, 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 Snoopy waddled around the stage. Soon, all the parts had been handed out and it was time for Charlie Brown to direct. He asked Schroeder to set the mood for the first scene. But as soon as Schroeder started playing, everyone started dancing again. Lucy and Charlie Brown watched from the side of the stage. Isn't it a great play, Lucy asked? It's all wrong, Charlie Brown told her. Let's face it, we all know that Christmas is a big commercial racket, Lucy said. But Charlie Brown was determined. Well, this is one play that's not going to be commercial. What do you want, Lucy asked. The proper move, Charlie Brown responded. We need a Christmas tree. Lucy thought this was a great idea. A great big shiny aluminum Christmas tree. That's it. I'll take Linus with me, said Charlie Brown. The rest of you, practice your lines. All sizes and colors. Big, bigger, pink, and purple, and red. They were all made of metal or plastic. Gee, do they still make wooden Christmas trees, Linus wondered. And that's when Charlie Brown saw it, the perfect Christmas tree. This little green one here needs, uh, seems to need a home, said Charlie Brown, but Linus wasn't so sure. I don't know, Charlie Brown. Remember what Lucy said? This doesn't seem to fit the modern spirit. I don't care, Charlie Brown said. We'll decorate it and it'll just be right for our play. Besides, I think it needs me. We're back, Charlie Brown announced, as he and Linus brought the little tree into the auditorium. The other kids couldn't believe what they were seeing. This tree was all wrong. You're supposed to get a good tree, Lucy told Charlie Brown. Can't you even tell a good tree from a poor tree? Everyone laughed and walked away. Everyone except for Linus. Ben, I guess you're right, Linus. I should have picked this little tree. Everything I do turns into a disaster. I guess I really don't know what Christmas is all about. Isn't there anyone who knows what Christmas is all about? Sure, Charlie Brown, said Linus. I can tell you what Christmas is all about. Linus walked to the center of the stage. A lone spotlight shone on him as he began to speak. And there were in the same country, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praying God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. There was silence in the auditorium as Linus walked back to Charlie Brown. That's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown added. Charlie Brown thought about what Linus said. He picked up the little tree and walked out of the auditorium. 
Charlie Brown looked up at the starry night sky. He finally understood the meaning of Christmas. Linus is right. I won't let all this commercialism ruin my Christmas. I'll take this little tree home, decorate it, and I'll show them it will really work in our play. Charlie Brown took his tree to a place where he knew there would be a lot of decorations, Snoopy's doghouse. He selected a shiny red ornament. But when Charlie Brown put the ornament on the tree, it collapsed. I killed it, Charlie Brown cries. Everything I touch gets ruined. Charlie Brown walked off in despair. A few moments later, the other children arrived. I never thought it was such a bad little tree, Linus said as he wrapped his blanket around its base. It's not bad at all, really. Maybe it just needs a little love. Went off Snoopy's doghouse. Soon the little Christmas tree had been transformed into a, a festive Christmas tree. When Charlie Brown returned, he was stunned. What's going on here? He asked. Merry Christmas, Charlie Brown, all the kids said. And then everyone began to sing, even Tory Brown. Thank you for listening to our reading of A Charlie Brown's Christmas. Merry Christmas. Well, I'm sure you're all smiling smiles and chuckles of love in, in the celebration of the season. And as if it wasn't enough that we had all those wonderful children presenting that story for you, we now have a special musical presentation by Drew Mako. Merry Christmas and thank you for watching. Shawty, we